Hi, I'm Asia Smith, and this is EarthWise. We're a monthly series that focuses in on healthy, sustainable living in the CSRA. We're going to meet a lot of really amazing farmers and health enthusiasts who will help us learn how to live a better, healthier life. So come grow with us. We're excited about what's going on here. We can't wait to show you. Uh, what we do is aquaponic. We kind of take the best of both worlds. Uh, with aquaculture is the growing of fish in a, uh, in a smaller area. And hydroponics is basically growing plants in water, not using soil. So uh, we've kind of taken them both together. And we create fish with vegetables. What we do is lettuce. But you can grow just about anything. Um, we're experimenting with stuff. But right now, we've concentrated on lettuce. Wow. About four and a half years ago now, maybe closer to five, we, uh, we didn't live in Georgia, and we were watching 60 Minutes, and they did a piece about aquaponics, and they were doing it in the middle of winter in Chicago in uh, an old five, I think it was a five-story abandoned factory. And they were supplying organic food and tilap fresh tilapia to, in Chicago, would have been a smaller area, but to tens of thousands of people. And we thought it was a pretty neat idea, and uh, the next day I was getting ready to fly out. I, I worked out of state during the week and uh, we were having coffee and Lisa said to me, you know, that would work in work Sardis, in Georgia, where her, her family's from. And I thought she was crazy because I, I saw it in an urban setting, but I really didn't think about it in a, in a rural setting. But what we realized was when we come here, there is a lot of agriculture, but there is not a lot of vegetables. So unless you're growing it yourself, you can't buy them locally. And we. I just never really thought of that. So, what kind of are some of the difficulties that you encounter doing aquaponics versus kind of more typical farming where you're maybe in raised beds or in a garden? Um, well, for one, we had never thought about farming traditionally. Um, we were never good at gardening. We were never good at keeping house plants alive. So, we, 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 it was just really never going to be an option for us. But what we did notice about uh, aquaponics was the density at which you could plant, especially in, a, in an enclosed setting, we basically have about 12,000 heads of lettuce growing in a 1 12th acre footprint. Wow. And it would vary depending on vegetables, but it's, uh, it, it's very dense. And it, it, We'll show you this row, but this row here holds about 1,800 heads of lettuce that are growing out. And so we start with a seeding process and we, we work our way through it. We'll show you that too. Wow. But, uh, what we really did realize was you could grow an awful lot on a small footprint, and that really intrigued us. And because of uh, power needs, uh, water conservation, we use about 3% or less of the water that you would use to farm what we farm here. We use less than 2% of the, uh, the fuel or electricity that you would use to farm uh, conventionally. And we don't have any of the machinery that, that is required, and we also, when we harvest, we don't have to harvest bending over. We take the, the trays out, they're at waist height, we harvest, put them back and start over. So it's actually a lot better for your back, <laughs> whether you're 20 or you're 50. Um, and so th those are some of the things that really intrigued us and got us going with it. And we also, we looked at in rural areas where we don't have access to this type of food, um, not only can we grow it, but we can, if we can get to a certain size, we can create jobs in a smaller town. bit of work with the school system around here. Can you tell us about that? Uh, well, we are set up with several of the schools to come and allow the students to walk through for educational tours. And we're super excited to be providing school lunch, um, lettuce for their lunches uh, here shortly. So that is something in Burke County that is very exciting. Yeah. And um, they are uh, currently allowing a lot of the small farmers to come into the school, teach children about local farming, about local produce, the importance of understanding how to farm it, how to eat healthier, and that's just something that we so need to be a part of and we're excited. Yeah. Right. Right. So how does this whole process work? 
Well, it's super exciting. And when I explain it to children and when I'm at farmer's markets, <clears throat> excuse me, these are our seed trays here behind us. And our medium that we use is coconut core. It's the exterior of a coconut core ground down. And we mix that with the miculite and that creates our medium. Lay it out in our seed trays and plop the seed down in it. In two to three days, we have germination. And then we get to a week later and we will move those from the seed trays into the floaters, which is our nursery trays. And the seeds it, you know, begin to grow and you get about a two inch plant about at that time. And they stay there and we take the healthiest of the healthiest out of that nursery tray, then put it into our grow trays. And it takes from germination to harvest Four, about five, five and six oh. weeks. And then Seed. it ends up on somebody's table. When it leaves this, when it leaves the state, it, it comes in here and we let it grow for the last three or four weeks. And it, it's miraculous to me how it grows because the only thing that it really has are the fish that we have in the back tank, the tilapia and the koi currently. And what they do is, I mean, they basically, they swim, they eat as much as they can. They, uh, they do their business and as they do their business, they keep swimming and the water is aerated. There's a lot of bubbles in the water and it breaks it down quickly to ammonia. And from ammonia, you get nitrites, uh, same as in soil. And from the nitrite, nitrites, you get nitrates, which is the building block that, that all plants need. And so that's, that's basically it. It filters through. We, it's a gravity-fed system coming in. So at, uh, at the fish tank, we've got about 1,100 gallons with the fish. There's currently about 500 fish, varying from a quarter pound to a little over a pound. And uh, the water is gravity-fed out of that. It comes into this trough. And it's basically just a, like a slow moving river or brook where the water travels all the way through it's, it, and it makes its way through the four long troughs. It comes back to here and in this last trough we've got a pump that pumps the water from here back into the fish tank and it oh, starts cool. over. It's very impressive to just know you guys didn't have a science background or a gardening background even and that you were able to do this all on your own. Yeah. That's definitely inspiring. It can be done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it can be done. We're living proof of that. Yeah. <laughs>